to 15 years yeah, of torment and frustration, years. the story of the hammer and the nail Come turned on. upside down. If you remember back in 2008, after Alabama came off an SEC championship loss to Tim Tebow and the Florida Gators, they got thumped by a much hungrier Utah team. Lane Kiffin is staying put in Oxford. That now makes Liberty head coach Hugh Freeze the front runner for the Auburn job. It's been a whirlwind of a month in Tuscaloosa following the firing of Alabama head baseball coach Brad Bohannon for his role in an improper gambling scandal. This was far from a perfect performance. Bryce Young did throw two interceptions, and in the second quarter, the offense feels like it sometimes lulls to sleep. This finish is up there in the pantheon of great games in the history of Jordan-Hare Stadium, and that's truly saying something. If you're a baseball fan, I'm about to run back to the sports office and see how the Phillies ended oh. up because I know they were this close to They're blowing it. This is truly a once-in-a-lifetime experience. It's not every Wednesday you get a chance to do a live shot in a pace car here at Talladega Super Speedway. It was Texas who controlled pace, controlled tempo, and dictated much of this football game up until the fourth quarter. And not only was O'Brien once the offensive coordinator in New England, he also was the head coach of the Houston Texans for a number of years. It's the story that won't die. Nick Saban, Jimbo Fisher, They've been feuding for it feels like an eternity. It's only been two weeks. Georgia knew the only way they could earn their respect from the nation was to go at the champ and knock them out. He has the ability to change a game anytime he has the basketball in his hands. And again, it's smart. So this is when guards come to play. They can take over games. And of course, we've seen them take over tournaments. We're here on Bourbon Street, probably the only acceptable time we can go live on Bourbon Street. But you know, it's a fun day in New Orleans. It's day three of Sugar Bowl prep. We got these Under Armour t-shirts that read I went to Auburn football practice and all I got was this war damn t-shirt. Nobody on earth saw this coming, not even 24 hours ago. Earlier this afternoon, we had a chance to sit down with members of both the Alabama Crimson Tide and the San Diego State Aztecs. Ray Liotta's performance of Henry Hill and Goodfellas is on par with anything Brady ever did in a Super Bowl, any goal Gretzky ever scored in a Game 7, and that Coco Cabana tracking shot scene, well, that might just edge out Jordan's shot on Elo in 1989. There are grown men barking in our faces. There's very much a pro-Georgia crowd, at least early on. And the two questions people here in the Southeast are going to be asking, a, will Alabama be the number one team in all the land heading into the semifinals? And B, how far will Georgia fall? Jeff Stricker shot a 65 today. That's good for seven under. And hey, it was a bogey free round. So considering that he was in a hospital bed just months ago, an incredibly successful day for Steve Stricker here at Greystone. You can feel the energy. It's starting to become palpable. You're seeing a lot of crimson from a frigid, bone-chilling Indianapolis International Airport where the current temperature is just about 17, 18 degrees. Not many teams come into the college football playoff 13-0 with a giant chip on their shoulders. We are just hours away from tipping off the 2023 NCAA tournament. Down to their final out, down a run, the resiliency that's come to define this Alabama baseball program was on full display yet again at the Tuscaloosa Regional. Will Levis right there grew up a native New Englander, grew up watching Tom Brady play for the Patriots, and he's kind of adopted that strange TB12 diet. Here in Dallas, well, they dress to impress. Auburn has now lost five of their last six games. They'll be playing for their NCAA tournament lives down the stretch. Jamie, Alabama fans are used to seeing a blowout when the Kentucky Wildcats come to town. However, this time the shoe was on the other foot and it was the Tide who was on the right side of a 40-minute beatdown. You heard Anderson there saying he cried his eyes out after that LSU loss. Last week, Talladega, Geico 500. This week, it's the Grand Prix of Alabama. Hey, it's the racing capital of the world. Jimmy Johnson, thanks so much for a couple minutes of your time. Good luck Sunday. Hot, fresh, buttery beignets with enough powdered sugar to sink a small ship in every bite. Better than the last. Alabama's in the unfamiliar position of trying to ensure that they just have a chance for a New Year's Six Bowl. With big names like Joey Logano, Ryan Blaney, and Chase Elliott picked as odds-on favorites to win the Geico 500, well, it shouldn't surprise anybody that veteran driver Kyle Busch took the checkered flag. Tonight's loss in the Iron Bowl very well may have signaled the end of the Cadillac Williams era at Auburn. Not only are they postseason bound, but there's a very good chance that they will host their first regional since the 2006 season. Alabama, San Diego State, a real clash of styles coming to you Friday and ABC 3340 Sports will be here all week. Jeff, breaking it all down. Two biggest schools in this state playing in our biggest city on the biggest stage in the sport. Well, it doesn't get much bigger than this. The stars at night are big and bright Deep in the heart of Texas The prairie sky is wide and high in the heart of Texas. Welcome
Welcome to the Lone Star State the host of this year's Goodyear Cotton Bowl. And if you haven't been to Texas in a while, well, let me assure you, this isn't the old Wild West. Things are changing here. Now, this was the site of the original Cotton Bowl. That was until 2010, however. Now, this is the new home of the Cotton Bowl. AT&T Stadium just down the road in Arlington, home to the five-time Super Bowl champion Dallas Cowboys. And, well, it leads credence to the old saying, everything's bigger in Texas. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Now, question is, is Texas technically the South? Well, regardless if you consider the Lone Star State part of the geographical south, they've certainly taken Southern hospitality to the next level. Foosball, Papa Shot, Space Invaders. This is the Cotton Bowl's media hotel hospitality room that doubles as a sports writer's Chuck E. Cheese. Three meals a day, unlimited snacks, and all the Dr. Pepper you can drink. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> But there's plenty of good eats here in Dallas, and sure, there's a Whataburger on almost every corner, but if you fancy yourself a barbecue connoisseur, well, Dallas has you covered. Pulled pork, ribs, brisket. This city has it all, and here in Texas, well, they put barbecue sauce on everything. Texas forever, Texas forever. Well, we are here to cover a football game after all, and this college football season, it's been a roller coaster ride, to say the least. And in Dallas, they're all about their fashion. Bolo ties, boots, and Big Ten gallon hats. Here in Dallas, well, they dress to impress. But this Boston boy is no J.R. Ewing. Bend the bill in the South Fork. So no doubt about it, this is a big game with big stakes being played in a very big state. And we can't wait to bring you all the action. Deep in the heart of Texas, I'm Johnny Condon, ABC 3340 Sports. If you had your choice, would you rather be Brady or Beethoven? Breeze or Bach? How about Marino or Mozart? Well, for Thompson 8th grader Trent Seaborn, it's not a Sophie's choice because not only does he play saxophone in the middle school band, he's a maestro at quarterback for Thompson High School. I've been uh, playing football probably since I was four. Um, been playing quarterback since I was six, and ever since then, it's just been my passion. Just a unique guy, and he's always you know, ask questions about quarterback and then talk about quarterback and then now he's starting to grow up and have a chance to play quarterback and experience high school. And, you know, although he's in eighth grade, he's been around here so long, it feels like, you know, you forget he's just in eighth grade. No doubt it's rare to have an eighth grader play quarterback at a varsity level, not to mention a 7A varsity level. But what's even more unique, when he's not in the pocket picking apart defenses, he's playing baritone saxophone in the middle school band. Probably about fourth grade, I picked up the saxophone because they're both E-flat instruments, so they have the same fingering and the same notes and made it a little bit easier. And I just love music. I love music a lot. I love playing it, love listening to it, so that's how I picked it up. Trent, um, you know, has done a great job, you know, rising to the challenge on saxophone and um, really doing a great job on Barry and learning the music we've been in front of him. He is so much more mature than his age. Um, you know, he's just really easy to carry on a conversation with. He can talk to anybody. Um, and he's just been really great with our students here. Um, it just made a really positive impact on the program. From throwing a back shoulder fade on a dime to hitting the high note on a sax solo. <laughs> Only one important question remains. Would you rather be the starting quarterback at Alabama or be first chair in the Boston Pops? Uh, I, I would have to choose the quarterback before the music. 